Greetings traders, this is Houston Trung from TradingEdge.org, and here's your weekly market outlook for May the 20th to the 24th, 2019. And this week was no different than last week. As I mentioned on the blog about 10 days ago, we've entered into a time of headline risk, and this week was certainly dominated by the headlines, as every single tweet and headline was dissected by traders and reacted to in the marketplace. So let's get into the week that was and look at what we can expect for the coming week now in terms of the fundamental news of course you know you got to keep your eyes out eyes out and uh, your risk management tight to account for any new headlines that are coming out at the same time we also still need to be paying attention to earnings lots of earnings reporting this coming week and of course there's fomc on wednesday so be prepared for that volatility as everyone's going to be watching the Fed to see how they're reacting to the potential uh, potential trade war. So let's get into the charts now. So as always, let's begin with our VIX chart and take a look and see where we came from this past week. So even through all the headlines, so Trump dropped the big bomb on Monday, which caused the markets to drop and gap down over 2% on, uh, on most of the indices on Monday. But interestingly enough, VIX closed the week as an inside week. So even with all that volatility, there wasn't measurably more fear than there was the week prior. So now traders are getting kind of used to this baseline level of, of uncertainty. And so we didn't get these higher highs. People are not rushing off to buy their, their you know, a fresh round of puts. So as you see on the weekly chart there, we have this inside week on the daily chart here. We see here that we, we had that one green day on the VIX, right? That Monday when things popped uh, popped down on the indices and up on on the uh, on the VIX. But as you can see here, it tapped, you know, basically opened up. It, it, it traded above. There was a, there was a gap here at 30 to 24. I still have that red line on there, as the markets haven't been able to convincingly break through that. And we still have the unfilled gap here at 3323. I'm sorry, it did get filled. I'm sorry. This is the one that uh, that ended up as being resistance. So I'm going to actually blow out this uh, previous line here because we don't need that anymore. It's not that pertinent. But after uh, Monday, uh, they basically sold it off. So Tuesday, we had a slow bleed down. Then Wednesday was aggressive selling to the downside. And then we had two more red days uh, on Thursday, Friday. So on Wednesday, you had this outside bar, right? So it starts off as a, as a bit of fear, pops up. But look at the weekly level here, right? So that purple line, I've been telling uh, you know, everyone to keep watching the weekly opens and the, you know, and the opens of the major time frames. This week was a kind of a, 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 those two levels, the weekly open and the quarterly open, that's that blue line right there. Um, were levels that the indices and the and the VIX charts were, 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 were trading around. So on Wednesday, there you go, hits the weekly open, cannot close above it. They sell it down, creates the outside bar, goes outside and down for Thursday. Now, the question always after the outside and down bar is, does it go back up or does it come back down again and to make the new lows? And people were kind of thinking that it was going to go down, and it did that for most of the day. So on Friday, we did have a slight gap up higher on the VIX, but they promptly sold that. But then right in the last hour of trading, um, there was some news that came out that pushed the the the, uh, the bar back into the about mid mid range of uh, uh, of the previous day's range. So now we have an outside down and another outside bar. So certainly this means there's still a lot of volatility. Right, anytime you have the ability for buyers or sellers to take up both sides of the previous bar's range, you have you know aggressive trading going on. So now the question always is so after an outside bar where do you go from here outside and up outside and down or does it go on inside day again to start monday because on the four hour chart now what we're left with on the four hour and you know essentially if you look at the two day chart here in the top left hand corner we had after monday's and tuesday's action we had that inside bar and down so that was an easy trade because it was actually a you know a two-day consolidation all that chop was a two-day consolidation then we had that big selling on that Wednesday, and they could progress, and it you know kept going on Thursday. So now on the four-hour chart, what we're left with is this sequence here. So remember, remember the daily chart we have that outside day and down, and then outside day again. Now what we have here is we have now an inside bar. Here's our Friday. It gapped up, but they sold it. And now we have inside bar again. So we want to watch on Monday how this outside inside, one of our favorite patterns, 
how it resolves here, right? So this is always an interesting sequence. Out, inside, outside, inside, very quickly. Here, you people consolidating, expecting a breakdown, and then it goes outside bar. So everyone who got in here thinking it was going to break down effectively had their stops. If they had any stops, they were jumped over because it opened up there. So there's a bit of panic mode there and slowly bled down again as it couldn't break, break the weeklies open. Came back down with people thinking it could be an outside bar and down to keep going. But we got the inside bar for the final four hours of the trading day. So we want to be watching here which way does it break on Monday, right? So does it break down, outside bar and down? Does it, you know, go outside bar, inside bar and up? Or do we get another range? type of scenario. Again, you really want to be watching, can it break below or above this inside bar and stay below or above that inside bar? That's what you want to be watching for. Not just that it breaks, it's, you want to be seeing can it stay outside that range? Because if you get outside those ranges, then you have a continuation of that trend. So if it pulls back in, then it's an invalidation of that signal. And that's a, then you need to kind of wait a little further until it takes out this one or side of the one side it's range or the other that's what you want to be watching for for that scenario okay so on the inverse of this we have the spy so on the spider just to take a big macro picture for a second the spider is still trading inside month and up this up condition is 285.18 right now we're trading at 285.84 so you still have the condition of inside bar and up even though you know we've had a lot of selling on the spy that inside quarter signal is still legitimate. The issue though with all the indices, all of them have this situation here, the outside bar. So we now have outside bars on the month on all the indices. So the question now is gonna be, you know, for the, for the next month, we still have, again, another two weeks of trading, but how does, uh, what does next, next month look like, right? How do we get outside this big range? It's a fairly decent sized range uh, month. How do you get to outside this range? And we want to be watching for that, right? Does it go inside bar, outside bar and up, outside bar and down, or some sort of outside bar, inside sequence? So in the monthly chart, we have this outside bar. So you know, we want to see how this the rest of this month, rest of this month plays out. Do we stay with a you know a big red bar like this? Does it get even a, does it become even a bigger red bar and invalidate the quarterly um, inside up condition? Does it somehow make its way back up and turn to some sort of hammer? Or does it even turn green with two weeks left? Who knows, right? We got a lot of time left, and in this smart environment, anything's possible. Uh, some things are less likely than others, but anything's possible. So let's see if it you know, stays inside of last month's range, or does it get outside and stay outside those uh, those ranges? Now, on the, uh, on the daily chart, this is what we ended up with, right? So on the daily chart here, well, let's just start with the two-day chart first. Two-day chart, easy enough. It's actually uh, for the past two days here. See the daily chart there? That's this bar there, right? So you have an inside scenario now. So basically, you know, you, although you had up and down situation here on Thursday, Friday, basically just created a consolidation bar here on the two-day chart. So how does this two-day chart resolve, right? Does it go inside bar and up or inside bar and down? That's going to be, and again, it, you, you're watching to see if it can stay outside those those uh, those uh, ends, right? The, 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 the either sides of the ranges because then that means we're going to get some continuation. If it comes back in again, then again, you could come back down or vice versa, go back up. So on the daily chart, what's more interesting is this, right? So here's the sequence that played out. Monday, we had that big gap down. And like I was saying on this scenario here, uh, back here, we're expecting this pivot to get taken out, right? This pivot here the, on the last week, if the buyers were going to, you know, because it looked like last Friday, the buyers had control. And, you know, they weren't that far off from taking that high. But with the headline risk and the what you know Trump uh, announced, I mean, on Monday the stock markets gap down. But you can still see the buyers are still trying to buy this thing. So you know for the rest of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have green bars. Even though Friday we ended up a bit lower, you know most of the time during the open market, you know the, the markets are green. They're going. They're trying to go up. They're closing higher than where they actually open. So we're getting green days, even though some days like this one here is actually a red day because of the, uh, the initial gap down. So here's a, a nice sequence, right? Outside bar and down. We know that signal well. You want to see which way it breaks down. In this case here, it breaks to the upside. So you expect this pivot to get taken out here. So that was, you know, you know what I, uh, I talked about uh, during 
an open hours open office hour session um i did on a wednesday saying this very high it's a very high likelihood that if we can break above this area here we're going to go above we're going to hit this area if the buyers can keep control and that's what we got on friday uh, thursday so we took out that at high that pivot high and we came back in so at this point here here's the issue right now you're going outside bar and up and you broke below uh you're going back down again so if it can stay below 285.76 there's a chance it comes back the other side and takes out that pivot low so that's what you need to be watching for here is you know they try to battle back on friday they, and they basically did close above this bar's high but this guy breaks down here now we're going back to wednesday's lows so on the intraday chart let's say the four hour chart is it telling us which way it's going to break? No, not right now. All it's telling us here right now is get an inside bar in the last four hours of the of Friday. But knowing what we've seen on Mondays, it could gap up or down either way. So it makes it very difficult to, you know, to try to predict where price is going to go. And and I'm certainly not in the prediction game. I don't uh, I don't believe that's a feasible way of trading. It's trying to predict where price is going to break. So all we can do is respond to price. And right at this point here now, we know that it's going to be significant whichever way it breaks. You get your inside bar now. Whichever way it breaks, it's going to be significant. Here, uh, it would be an easier trade if it does an inside bar and up. Because look, you actually have an inside bar reversal here. If it does, we go inside bar and up. We can have some. We have pivots to go after. So here's an inside bar. It broke to the downside, right? So on Friday, they gapped it down. But now, if the buyers can take control again and they break above this high on Monday, they can go after that pivot, that pivot, and that pivot. So that'd be a, a, a you know a viable trade, a good trade. Again, but if it gaps down, right, then they're gonna go after these pivots here. Like we said, they're gonna go after Wednesday's lows down here. That'll be this outside bar here, which has a nice juicy pivot to go after if they decide to go after it. Okay. So let's go to the queues now. On the queues, start off with the same um, um, notable thing to draw your attention to. That is outside bar on the monthly chart. Okay. So same thing as a spy. On the three month chart, so this one here is also outside bar, inside bar, and up. Okay, so there's your high here, 182.83. This signal is still in force. The unfortunate part now is that there's no pivots to go after. You took out the people who are short from up here by, by this big move we had earlier in the quarter. Now it's pulled back in. Now do we pull back even further and invalidate this signal? 182.83, we're only eight cents from keeping this particular um, um, uh, setup in force. So back to the, um, on, let's see here, the two day chart, we have this sequence here now, where we have an inside bar, just like we had in the SPY. So how do we break out of that inside bar, right? On the daily, we have the exact same pattern where we had the SPY, outside and down, and then climbed away, it's back up again, taking out that pivot. When it took out, took out that pivot, then it's, you know, it was, the job was done, it had nothing else to go after, and you know the buyers ran out of strength, that was the immediate place to go after because that was Friday's high. And as I mentioned on the video, the YouTube live session, you know, outside bars are terrible places to put your stops. So that's what they did. They basically took out the high here was 185.89, and the high there was 186.07. So they took out those guys' uh, stops. Okay, so on the four hour chart, we need to watch for it now. Which way does this sequence break? Uh, inside, outside, and down. So now, can they push it back up and go outside bar and down and back up again? Or does it keep falling back down the range? And uh, we need to watch for that and be responsive to however un it unfolds. Again, if, the, if it breaks to the downside, it breaks to the upside, it's gonna be an easy, easy trade as well because it's gonna go outside bar and down, cracks above this high here, we know we can go after that pivot there. Otherwise, if it continues to go outside bar and down, they're going to go after Wednesday's lows, just like we saw with Spider. Okay, Russell. Russell, like the Dow, has kind of been a lagger. These two have actually, uh, uh, you know, they never hit their all-time highs, unlike the Russell, uh, excuse me, unlike the Spider and Qs. And so these guys are definitely lagging further behind. For the Russell, it was really a battle of the quarterly open this past week. So on the uh, three-month chart, just to show you the weakness of the Russell here, we had that inside bar on the Russell that went inside bar and up, and it, it never held that inside bar break to the upside. There was very, you know, it held it for maybe a couple of, of days at most, but it quickly could pull back in. So this Russell is certainly a lot weaker than the spies and the Qs. So people do not want to be speculating with these small uh, cap stocks. 
at this point in the in the uh, market cycle. So we got our outside bar now with uh, with the Russell on the monthly chart. Look inside and up. People thought it was going to continue. The momentum people, as soon as it comes back in here now, it comes back the other side. And now the issue here is they're going to possibly if they can push it, go below or take out this pivot here, the inside bar pivot. Because now we're trading below the quarterly open. So this is prime conditions to be shorting Russell stocks. If it can stay below the quarterly open, then you can short with impunity. You have the quarterly open down, you know, red. You have the monthly red. You have the weekly. If it breaks down next week, red. Then any signals you're seeing on the Russell or Russell related stocks that also have that condition present, those are great shorting opportunities. On the week, Again, Russell tried to fight back, but just couldn't really do it, right? So here, outside weak and down. Okay, so what we wanted to see how it was going to finish, you know, how it was going to uh, resolve the outside bar, and it went outside bar and down. So now the question goes: Do we go outside bar and down and and further down and go after the you know the lows here, or somehow can the bulls fight their way back up above the quarterly open? You want to be watching for that blue line, the quarterly open. Can they find their way back above it? And then try to reclaim, you know, uh, May's highs. So if it goes outside, down, and cuts, you know, cuts above last this last week's high, then that pivot goes back in play again. But for now, you can see on the daily chart just uh, how important that quarterly and weekly open was. So quarterly again is in blue, weekly is in purple, and you can see those levels currently in play. So there's a gap down on Monday. Outside bar and down. They could not push it further down. It goes outside bar down and back up again. It takes out that high. But look, they're fighting the quarterly open right there. I mean, the, the weekly open right there. There on Wednesday, it finally touches the quarterly open, but cannot close above it. Now on Thursday, that you know the markets are very strong that day, but somehow the Russell had less strength and was not able to take out Friday's high. So Russell certainly you know could not uh, muster the strength to take out Friday's Friday's highs, and so they pull it back down again. On Friday, they gap down and it closes near the lows. So Russell, by far, is one of the weaker ones. And we're left with inside bar reversal, possibly. Uh, so inside bar reversal right here. So what happened here was, look, outside bar, inside, and it goes to the upside. Now, you have the inside bar. And people thought it was perhaps going to break to the upside, but instead they reverse it, right? So there's your inside bar reversal because it goes inside bar and up, consolidates. They thought it was going to go higher, it didn't. It gaps down. You had a chance to get short again here, and it breaks back below the the quarterly and weekly open, back to the downside. Now looking like it's going to you know possibly fulfill this this uh, this, this job to take all these pivots here. So now, can we push it back through the range, right? Okay, so on to the Dow. Dow, same situation on the monthly chart. Well, actually, this is actually a little bit different. Sorry, the Dow does not actually have an outside bar. So this is actually uh, the weakest out of all the uh, sectors, uh, excuse me, the indices, because there's actually no outside bar here. So the buyer is never able to even push above the previous month's highs. So on the Dow, we have a simple condition of an inside bar reversal as we've been talking about and it came really close as we're still waiting for this pivot here to get taken out so the bed Dow certainly um, the bar stepped in there and they were not able to take out this pivot low but that's still an intermediate target if they can push it back down towards that area and on the three-month chart again it's still very weak outside inside it broke above briefly above that inside bar but it comes back down again so that sequence is not valid now on the uh, daily, here same situation again, outside and down it comes back up, but like the Russell, could not muster enough strength to take out that pivot high. Instead, what they do is they go outside bar up and they break below this low here, and it does stay below there. So unlike the Russell, it stays below, and now it's coming back down into this potential range. Okay, so. Like the uh, Russell, this thing's trading below the quarterly open. However, it was trading above the weekly open, which is why we didn't see it totally fall apart this past week. It was trading above the weekly open for most of the week. 
but it could not even come close to taking out the quarterly open right there. So now you have this kind of time conflict condition, which may resolve itself, or time frame conflict situation, which may resolve itself in the coming week. Because, you know, there's our monthly open, down. Quarterly open, down. This weekly open, because it gapped down, that was going to be the open. And as long as it traded above it, you know, you had a green week, like you see here. So, where do we open next week? If we open somewhere high and it comes back down again, then you can set up something that's going to possibly, you know, lead to more selling. In this case here, the four-hour chart. Well, let's take a look at the two-day chart. The two-day chart is going to tell us that we have an inside day. So those past two days is an inside day. So you want to find out, you know, how this inside day breaks. Because we're so close to this Bollinger band here, you do have to watch out for it. You want, you know, this is what happened last time. You get to these Bollinger bands. If it gets through, a Bollinger Band has to stay down, right? So if it does somehow break below there, it has to stay below there. Because if it doesn't stay below, it's going to pop up like this situation here, where it looked like things were falling apart for the Dow, right? Came within just, let's see here, uh, the low there was 250.259, and the unfilled gap is 46. So if you don't stay down, what happens is you pop back up before you can come back down again, or if, if, you, if you do come back down again. So same thing here, if it breaks below the Bollinger Band, because the Bollinger Bands are very sideways right now, it needs to stay down and keep going down. So watch out for the Dow on the four hour chart, because again, just kind of like what the other indices are saying, here's your inside bar reversal, possible inside bar reversal if this high gets taken out. Otherwise, if you can take out that low, we may see that you know that visiting, uh, visiting back these, uh, these prior pivots here. Back down to 46 would be, you know, a, a very good target. All right. So let's move on to oil. So UK oil on the higher time frame, and say the talk of the quarter quarterly time frame, it's still outside inside quarter and up. So this thing is making its way back up to um, Q4's highs. So this chart still looking very strong. So even with all the machinations on the daily, we have. A, a weekly a green week okay so now on the two-day chart you know because we had this tight range we have that two-day chart showing an inside bar so how do we resolve this inside bar which way does it break and right now it looks like oil is just grinding higher right grinding 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 higher possibly going after this pivot here at 75.58 as it slowly makes its way back up again okay so keep an eye on oil bonds Slow trading, but interesting trading. This is an interesting chart because right now you're trading inside quarter still. So there's your inside quarter on the bonds. Now on the monthly chart, it looked like things. Um, excuse me, that's that's the wrong uh, screen. Excuse me. Let's go over here. On the monthly chart, it looked like we we're going to get an inside month, and it's going to hold. But it actually went. Look at this outside, inside, and up. So now this particular setup is in force. It broke above. Um, April's highs, and now they're going after March's highs right there, 126.69. So the you know the people keep buying bonds. So certainly it's not an environment where uh, there's, there's fear, but uh, they say that it's healthy the, the, the bond buying. So we'll see what happens, especially as China is risking or is threatening that they're going to uh, sell the U.S. Treasuries. But I don't think anyone's believing them yet. So there there is no reflection in the price. So we'll see what happens with that. Here's the interesting thing with the with the uh, with the uh, the bond chart, right on the daily chart, there's your gap up, you know, on, on Monday because of the uh, because of the news. Every day after that, it's just basically a red day. So it's kind of like the mirror opposite of, of of the spider, where most of the days are green. For bonds, most of the days are red. So that means it opens and it spells most sense most of the day selling off. Okay, so look at the, the four day chart, a uh, four hour chart on the bonds. Here's the situation you're in now. It's a it's a funny looking chart. Because if you look, here's the week. Okay, so here's Monday. Gaps up, inside bar. Gaps down, inside bar. Gaps up, inside bar. Gaps down, inside bar. Gaps up, inside bar. So every morning there is some headlines that, that causes the, the, the bonds to gap one way or the other. And then in the afternoon, it just slows down. <laughs> and it trades within the first you know four hour range. So that's the kind of week it's been, you know, where you have the headline risk really driving things and it's really represented well by the bonds. Because you get that, you know, headline risk that comes out overnight, causes the markets to gap up one way or the other. In the afternoon, 
things pretty much just die and you get that inside bar for the final four hours of the trading day so let's see if this can this you know this scenario can, or this pattern continues to unfold but it's quite uh tricky trading this especially with the TLT product because it's gonna gap and you know it's, it's really hard to manage that unless you're gonna be taking a wider time frame so that's the uh, that's the, the chart on TLT let's see if it can it continues to play out that way now EEM is a chart that we've been watching for a while the emerging markets ETF and it's been submerging right <laughs> the submerging markets ETF and look at the monthly chart now on EEM this is what we've been warning about as soon as it takes out 4335 we're saying that pivot's going to be in play. It took it out last week, and they've continued to sell it. So now it looks like they're going after these pivots down here. That's December's and January's lows. So we keep getting this news coming out, this steady parade of, of headlines, and they're going after these pivot lows. So Asian stocks, uh, Chinese stocks, you know, they're certainly getting hurt um, by these trade talks. So here's a really nice setup. Outside bar up against all the time frames except for the weekly one but it breaks to the downside and they gap it down they sell it all day okay so continue to watch the emerging markets see if they can find a bottom but right now it's not showing any bottoming um, patterns so the trend here for this guy is down right below the weekly open below the quarterly open below the monthly open so the trend is down that's all I can say about about uh, about that so let's do some quick um, uh, a quick review of the sectors. We haven't done that in a while, so I'll just quickly go over go over the sectors because it's quite interesting to see some of the. Actually, before we do that, let's just quickly look at Bitcoin. So let's look at uh, Bitcoin as we do normally do. So Bitcoin here, outside bar. Uh, sorry, inside bar and up on that. It finally took out the pivots that we talked about. So I said this pivot's going to be the one they're going to have to go after first. 77.88. It did that early in the week, and they could not quite push it up here yet. But that's still the next pivot to go after is 85067 so that's what that's the next pivot if the buyers can continue to uh, to exert strength here now it had a bit of a pullback over the past uh, couple of days and it's an interesting pattern so let's just quickly check it out here so here's the pattern on the daily so you have the outside bar marking basically the stopping point of, of that rally that went up uh, you know tremendously um, until it hit 84 83.52 okay and then it pulled back so it's outside bar and down now on Friday, we had a big sell-off, a good 5.6% uh, sell-off. Add that to another 3.4%, so a good, you know, close to 9% sell-off. And now it's a 10% sell-off with the 10 plus with the um, inside bar there. So now you want to see how does this resolve? This is uh, tomorrow's a new uh, um, Sunday night is a new trading week for for cryptos. 8 p.m. Eastern is the uh, the uh, the turn of the new week. So what happens with this right now? Does it go outside bar and down and break this and go further down? Or does it go outside bar, down, inside bar? If they can break above this high or that, or this high or that high, to come back up to test those all time highs. Not all time highs, but these yearly highs we've put in. Right now, the weekly open is, is standing solid. There's your weekly open. They pulled it all the way down to the weekly, the weekly open, and they've now found some buyers. Okay, so it's, it always makes you you laugh with the cryptos because in cryptos people tend to chase a lot, and I don't know if it's because it's the neat, the the nature of uh, of the traders and the retail traders who trade it, but they're always chasing price, and this is what chasing price looks like. So if you take a look, let's say at the twelve hour chart as an example on cryptos, like look at that run up here, especially starting here. I mentioned this setup the other you know a couple weeks ago inside our reversal to the upside. This is pure, pure momentum at this point here. This is pure momentum. So once you're getting up here now, you're going into the Bollinger Bands. Someone buys this, they go inside bar and up. It works a little bit, but as soon as momentum leaves the house, meaning it comes back in, it's gonna come back through the other side. And that's what happens here. We get that outside bar. So it comes back down in. Now, if it, once you know, if you're long here, and you buy this, this is a momentum setup, right? Because there's no correction here. You're going right into highs. So, because there's no pivots to go after, you're going right into highs. So this point here, you're hoping, you're hoping and the trade has to be that it has to keep going because as soon as it fails and it comes back into here, that's a red flag. It comes back into here, that's a really big red flag. Once it comes back into here, there's a really good chance that this low is going to get taken out and that low at the very least. And it gets, you know, then you have the outside bar created. Now you're going to watch out and say, what's going to be the next bar after the outside bar? Outside bar and down. Okay, it happens. Now they, there's no buyers to step in and take out that bar's high, so it goes down again 
and again it's just outside bar down and down and now there's a consolidation right here right outside bar consolidation inside bar and how does this resolve on the four hour chart really quickly it looks like that okay so there inside bar condition breaks to the upside get a shooting star there that kind of calls the top and it breaks down for the past one two days here i'm actually uh, i picked up some more bitcoin on this pullback attempt so i'm uh, uh this for me is an inside bar reversal so inside bar and down consolidates because they could not break below the weekly open so i buy here i did buy here at 72 76 60 and we'll see if this area holds or they break it back down and break below the weekly open i'm comfortable with that trade i think it's a great place to you know to try that pullback if it doesn't work it doesn't work but right now all the time frames are supporting the trade and so I'm, it gives me a trade that i'm comfortable taking so now i want to see does this weekly open hold we've got a new week coming just in you know a day or so so does that low there of 70.55 hold okay so let's uh, take a quick look now at total as we often do which is the uh entire crypto market and you have the exact very very similar pattern on uh, on total okay so right now it's still a very bullish looking pattern in the chart if you look at this here but it did go a little parabolic right so especially on the on the monthly chart here it, it got a little parabolic so a little pullback is absolutely not a uh, is absolutely warranted uh, let's talk about a few stocks here now and then we'll, we'll quickly examine our our sectors so there's a few stocks that I've been talking about. One is GoDaddy. Let's just see how they're doing. Some of them are doing better than others. So GoDaddy is not one of them. So GoDaddy, why I had talked about that stock is outside bar, inside bar, then up. Once it breaks below this, you know, this inside bar is high. The pattern is no longer in force, right? So we want just when you're watching how it reacts to this this inside bar high. So here, let me just put it on. I'll just draw it on all charts here so we can see the level okay so once it breaks below so this week here gap down so that signal is no longer in force anymore and you can see now once it breaks below there it actually turns into quite the bear situation because now you break below the quarterly open right there okay comes down outside bar looks good but it doesn't break above that quarterly open and it's still trading weekly open and down right so there's a weekly open in purple right there it goes in outside bar and up then as soon as that fails that's a sell signal so right now uh, GoDaddy is certainly looking like a better short than a buy, especially looking the weekly. Out to barn down and it goes down some more. So that's a good short uh, right now for GoDaddy. Play, same type of scenario with, with Play. So Play, once again, the idea was it was an outside inside pattern. We wanted to see how it resolved to the upside and it could stay above that. So once again, it could not. So it broke below 5408 on Thursday and Friday. And it's now trading below that area cannot stay above it and there's really no buy up no no buy options here on the way down so certainly not a situation where you want to be buying uh, uh, play look at this here outside barn down so not a, uh, a buy situation for uh, for play at this moment if you can crack back above somehow 5408 and put that back on your radar again but um, right now trading below that level uh, CBOE this one here is is still working. So this one here, there's your outside bar, inside bar on the quarterly, and it breaks above and stays above this uh, this area. Okay, 99.47. And so all these pullbacks have been good buying opportunities. So CBOE, the you know the, that business is still doing well in this environment. So you know here's your inside bar on the daily chart as an example. Inside bar and down on Monday. Remember stocks gap down on Monday. It's still look on CBOE, still a green nice green bar. There's your inside bar reversal, it takes all that high, and it's been going up. For the, it went up for the rest of the week. So CBOE is still one to to, uh, to watch on the long side, okay? Because that pivot high is still in play. Uh, AMD. This one is is something you need to watch out for because this is uh, you know kind of the poster child for momentum trading, and you want to see what happens to AMD. AMD, unfortunately, look at right now. We were saying, you know, inside bar and up scenario, but it would have to stay above 28.11. And right now, it can't seem to hold above that level. It's having a really hard time staying above 28.11. You can see here on the daily chart up top here, every time it tries to do so, it taps 28.11 and it comes back down again. So right now, it cannot stay above it. On the weekly, you have the opportunity for this to go outside down and back up. But again, that 28.11 area, uh, it can't stay above it. And you still have a red month. So this is the situation here where you have this kind of ping pong effect 
as you're kind of let wedged in between a few major time frames. Like on the daily, it shows you here. There's your monthly orange. Okay, quarterly. So excuse me, weekly, quarterly, and now you're sandwiched between this and playing ping pong. So keep your eye on, on AMD though because if it breaks down, it could really break down. This is what I'd be watching for is that quarterly area we mentioned, but here's the pattern. Outside bar and up, if this thing can break below this here, 2583, you have to watch out it's going to then come after that pivot there. Right now it's an inside month, so even with all those, you know, that, that, that trading that's going on, that ping pong, uh, that kind of ping pong that's going on, look, and that's basically creating a nice broad information. It's still trading inside month, so possibly in a couple of weeks, or we'll see what happens for the rest of the month. What you want to be watching out for is how does it get outside of last month's range. Again, watch out, put an alert for there. If it breaks below 2583, we're heading down to there. Very high likelihood of it. Otherwise, who knows? It can still mix it back up again and, and you know, play out the bigger pattern, which is this one here, inside bar and up, if it can crack above and stay above 2811. Now here's another <laughs> quite a quite a bearish uh, setup, and there's this one here on on John Deere, right? So this one here, our Deere and Company outside bar. So this is a three month chart, so quite the ugly chart here. Outside bar and up. That looked really good for Deere last quarter. It broke even higher. Buyers bought in here, but ever since you know you come back through this range again, bam, we come back to the other side. So here they're going after that pivot now. 128.32. So that's the pivot they're going after. Um, deer looking very, very ugly at the moment. Look at that. After earnings this past week, it did not look good. So now deer ripping back through the range and possibly coming out the other side there and taking out 128.32. One we've been talking about for a long time is, is Micron. It finally did its job and it, it completed the pattern we were talking about on the monthly chart. There, outside bar and up as soon as it breaks below 40.77. There's the pivot there, it's 3657. We finally got that pivot um, filled or, or taken out on Friday's trading because it looked decent uh, in the first half of the week. You know, it stayed green for most of the week. Then finally on Thursday, Friday, they they, they basically sold it off. You know, two and a 2.9 percent down on Thursday, and then 3.35 percent down on Friday. And so this stock finally gave up all its gains and took out that pivot that we've been looking for to, to take out, which is the same kind of you know trade that we're looking for Dow, right? So the, you know, to get Dow, just once again, same type of scenario. Outside bar and up. I oh, sorry, Dow's inside bar and up, and we're expecting this guy to take out that pivot there. The same type of situation. Okay, last thing here. I know it's a long video this week, I'm trying to jam a lot of good information here for you guys. But uh, let's quickly talk about uh, the sectors now and do a really quick um, review of them. So I'm just highlighting some of the ones that are notable or some of the things that are notable. So basic materials, well off the uh, all-time highs now. And uh, not all-time highs, but uh, yeah, all-time highs actually. Um, and then and coming back down. So that inside bar that it had last quarter is coming back through now. Energy, a lot weaker than you would think because of the strong oil. Right now, energy has that outside inside had gone up, but now it's back into the range again. Watch 67.42 for this thing to really reignite again. Financials getting weaker. So it also had that inside bar and up situation, but it came back down through the range. Again, watch this outside bar, or the, sorry, this inside bar high for this thing to tell us if it's gonna go higher or not. Industrials setting up for um, for more weakness possibly. Look, inside bar and uh, showing weakness, cannot break higher, comes back into the range. Tech, XLK, had a really strong pattern here. The, uh, this inside bar is 72, 75.25 right now, still trading above it. So XLK, which is heavily weighted in the higher, uh, uh, the bigger cap tech names, still trading above this inside bar high. So still showing relative strength. Staples, very strong staples. People are piling the staples now. Look, outside, inside, and up. Takes out that pivot. Now they're going after that pivot there. So people are looking for safety inside of staples. Utilities, same thing. The Utes went to all-time highs. Outside, up. Now inside bar, really close to taking out last month's highs. So utilities are, you know, showing very, very, uh, showing very strong. Healthcare also something potentially interesting. Look at this. Outside, inside, inside. Now, so second quarter of inside bar trading. How does it get outside of these ranges? So whichever way it cracks, expect that tight, that high, or that low to get taken out once it can break outside of this inside consolidation. And last one, discretionary, very strong. This quarter hit all-time highs um, and still trading 
outside of the previous quarter's range. So continue to watch this area here, 114.06 for this uh, strength to 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 to, um, to to prove itself. Have to stay above that area um, again for this signal to be enforced. So once again, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. I hope you have a fantastic trading week. Keep watching those headlines. Trade safe and happy trading.